Hey and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and it's review time again. And in today's review we are having a look at a Hornby model, which is good, because in the last review I looked at a locomotive that was made by Batman. And I also looked at a Batman model in the review before that one. And it's good to have something from Hornby again because let's be honest, they've been around the longest, haven't they? But Hornby's development history really is more interesting than anybody else. They really have come a long way. They started off as clockwork trains, then they went on to Hornby Doubler, which the models were made of metal, and the power was picked up from a third rail in the middle of the line. And then, of course, they went on to OO gauge. That we get today. But Frank Hornby didn't just create trains, well, model trains. He also created other toys such as dinky toys, which a little fact, he actually made them to go with his OL gauge layout. You can't get them anymore, but you can from some collector's shops. And also what's still going on today, Meccano. But we're not here to talk about dinky toys and guys with fancy moustaches. <laughs> we're here to talk about the model. And the logo we're looking at today is, well, she's quite special. Because out of everything I have in the collection, there's nothing else quite like her. She's one of a kind. And it is the GWR Dean Single, or GWR Single Wheel as some people like to call it. Now I will just be honest, this is the second model I've had, not got, or have, already, had. Why? Well, to those of you that follow me on Twitter, we'll know about this. The first model I bought from SNJ, which is where this model came from, was faulty. It just didn't work. When I put on the tracks it didn't move, it only made a buzzing noise. So I opened it up and upon closer inspection I noticed a burning smell coming from the motor. So somehow, mysteriously, the motor had burnt out. So I had to pack it back in its box and send it back to us and Jen. I sent him an email explaining what had happened. And they said, send it back and we'll sort it out. And they went and sent me a replacement. Which is this, which has just arrived. And apparently they tested it and it works, and I really hope it does, because <laughs> it is such a nice model. These, I'm told, are supposed to be better than the Caledonian single wheelers, and, well, that is true. The only thing I disagree with is that the fact that they've labelled them super detail, but that's all before you. But super detail or not, they're still really nice. So what have we got? We've got R2828, <laughs> very strange number there. GWR Dean Single 422, which is known as the 8 footer. Well, in real life it was 8 foot, the, the wheel arrangement was. These are also known as the Achilles class as well. Number 3064, which is the loco's running number, and it's called Duke of Edinburgh. Wow, a locomotive with three names. And I thought the HSTs were just as bad. And it's DCC red, as you can see there, but I don't really care. You've got the barcode and the minimum radius. Minimum radius, sorry. Which is 438mm, which is 438mm or something stupid. And it's limited edition as well. And I love how they've written limited edition in green lettering rather than black. And it's limited edition of 2,000 pieces. So, let's get it open and see what she's like. Now, obviously, as I have had one of these before, which this is the replacement I've had. I already know what they like, but obviously for this review, well, you'll soon see what she's like. Got that. Get all this gunf out. Right, so here's the standard Hornby box that we're all getting used to. Oh, well, gauge, of course. And on the back, you've got. Well, it says on the back here. Designed in England by Hornby Operators Limited, Margate Kent. And it's made in China. Now, if they're made in China and designed in Britain, why can't they make them in Britain? Nah, I don't know. Do not throw in the bin, as if we would. And there's a picture of a house there with an arrow on it. Mm, I guess that means like it's just transported to your house or something. It's like playing a game of catchphrases, isn't it? Say what you see. Uh, a house with an arrow on it. <coughs> and then you've got this C E. Don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> is that supposed to be a drawing of a train? It's just a rectangle with circles and a diamond on. And if it's supposed to be a train, I don't know many people that get their models delivered to them by rail. 
12V, obviously 12 voltage, and you get these weird lines on the box as well. Maybe it's supposed to be a railway track. Hmm. So Hornby have tried to decide and decorate the box by drawing pictures on it. Really amazing, isn't it? Then we have the card insert. Yeah. Not much to say about it. So I'll put that down. Then we have, ah yes, the DCC jacket. Pointless. <coughs> then we have the instructions for the Dean single, 422. And it's the usual stuff. Oh, it's upside down. Well, that's quite curious. The print is upside down. Anyway, so it's basically the usual stuff. Taking the body off, putting it back on, obviously, because that's important. If you didn't know how to take the body off, then, well, that would be no good. Lubrication and chipping it. Not literally by getting a hammer and a chisel on it and smashing it up. I mean, putting a DCC decoder in it. So that's fairly straightforward, apart from the fact that the printed them upside down. Sorry about the train on. We just want to have a little run through with these instructions. For those of you that follow me on Twitter, you may know that I have said on there that I now keep all instructions for my locomotives in a folder. I've done this for two reasons. One, because it's more professional and organised, and two, they're in here for reference. <clears throat> because until I put them all in a folder, I used to keep them in the boxes for the locomotives and put them under the layout. I still keep the boxes under the layout, but in order to do all this, I had to open up every single box and take the instructions out and hole punch them. So here we have the Helgen Class 47. I'll run these through quickly. The, Metro Vic, the Metropolitan Vickers Class 28 Cobo. The Class 70. And it pretty much goes on. Even the instructions for the Class 20s I have here in there. Not all locomotives I have came with instructions. That's because the original owners, being models that were second hand, decided to throw them in the bin. Not sure why they did that. And with some of the instructions, I've had to write literally what locomotives they are, because Hornby and Batman didn't bother to write them on themselves. So there's the one for the Terrier, as you can read. I'm sure you can. And it goes on. There's the Jinty, the Class A4, the Pride of the Fleet, everyone salute. No, it's not going to work, is it? Because, well, I can't see a salute. If I had a salute button, that would be awesome. That's basically what it's like inside. Yeah, Thompson D1, Class N15, and and it's pretty much the usual stuff. Although um, should be around here somewhere. Um, oh, there's the ones for the four for the four F Fowler, the Airfix one. Right, here's the one for the Class 31 in BR Green. And then if we go right round to the back somewhere, I will have to flip through all these. So. Apologies, there's the one for the WD. Even the models for the trains, yes, of course, they're in here. This could take a while. The 150, the 166, 108. Come on, where are you? Now in my look, they're probably right at the back. Ah, here we go. Here's the other one for the Class 31 in Civil Engineers livery. Now, I've written what liveries they are on the instructions to help me. <coughs> because why bother throwing two sets of instructions away? Because sometimes they can be different. And even if they were the same, I don't recommend you throw them in the bin anyway, because you could keep them for spares. <coughs> So that's pretty much the instructions. I will be showing you in this video how to put them in the folder because there is a slight knack to doing this. Okay, so now back onto the other gumpf. So what's this? <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, always wanted. Top prices, top prices paid. All been Batman stock is seen on websites, so they obviously want stock. No, thank you. That will go in the bin where it belongs. 
And then we have this, which is the certificate of authentication. The only thing that I don't like at this point is the fact that they have folded it up due to the size of the box, which is annoying, especially if you want to display this. And just for the kicks, I'll show you this. I'm sure I've shown you this before, but I'm going to show you again anyway. I keep all my certificates in a folder. So here's the one for the Kirinada, the Deltic. One of them has fallen out, which is this small one for the Batman Ivert. Uh, this one for the Lima Deltic, I thought I'd lost for some years until I found it. Isn't life ironic? And then there's the one for the Thames or Thames Fourth Express. Oh, there's an empty what fold poly pocket there. Here's the one for Commonwealth of Australia, the A4. Now look at the size of that certificate. Just right to fit in the box. If they could do that with that model, what couldn't they do with the Dean single? <laughs> Ugh. That, again, that's all before you. And then here's the one for the talisman. So, in this empty poly pocket, we shall get the certificate in. Which I must admit, I don't think it's going to be easy. I mean, look at that. You can easily see the creases there. Anyway, so, what have we got? Well, Duke of Edinburgh, Certificate of Authentication. It says what we get in the certificate, but we've already done that, so I don't need to do it. And there is a bit of brief history on the class itself. If you want to know any history of this class of locomotive, they were all designed by William Dean, and they were built between 1891 and 1899, and the last was withdrawn in 1916 and none have survived into preservation, which is a shame, although they did build a replica. Little story about the replica, the top halves of the drive wheels, they don't exist. And they apparently scrapped the tender as well. Why they did that, I'm not entirely sure, but then I did get the information off Wikipedia, which is never always true. But if any of you can confirm whether that is true or not, comment below please, because that would be interesting to find out. And interestingly, also goes on to talk about the model. The Hornby model of the Dean Class 3031 was first produced in 1961, which was Lord of the Isles. And since then, the model has appeared several other times before that. Oh, but this apparently is the only third time they've done that. They've brought out this one, obviously. Lorna Dune. There was also a train pack called the Flying Dutchman, but... Recently, I do believe they have brought out a fourth one, which I think was to celebrate something like the 175th anniversary of the Great Western Region. I'm not sure. I might be mistaken, but I'm sure they did do. And again, if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. And we have the nice picture of the early Great Western Railway logo there. And we have Simon Kohler's signature. Not sure if I pronounced his second name right, but then I'm, who cares. And it's limited to 2000, and it's number... 867, which is a fairly big number to start with. Sorry, not the camera then. Obviously, because it's on a worktop, there's a big stand thing under here. So, when I've put the folder down there, it's not the tripod because of where the legs are. Right, let's move on to the model. I've blabbered on long enough about this, that, and the other. Just to point out, as this model has been tested and works according to S&J, though I will test it myself first before I go any further after opening it up, it wasn't wrapped in tissue paper, so I've taken the liberty to wrap it up in normal tissue paper that you used to blow your nose on. Why? So you can see it. Well, so it's a surprise to you. So you can see what it's like. I've already seen what it's like already, obviously, because the first one I had to send back, which was faulty. But, you know... Anyway, so, there's the empty polystyrene tray. Not as good as the packaging that splits in two, but, oh well. Beggars can't be choosers. And here is the locomotive. Now, before we get any further, let's just quickly put it on the tracks and test it. Right, well, I've tested the model, and I am pleased to report that this model works. Thumbs up. Well... 
Of course, I mean, I didn't think s &J models would lie about that, would they? Because it's important. They have to deal with customers. But I was worried for a sec. I thought they'd sent me back the wrong one, the model, the model that didn't work. I don't know with the model that was... I don't know what they have done, sorry, with the model that was faulty. But I can only suggest that they sent it back to Hornby. Because who else is going to walk into the shop and buy that one? But anyway, let's begin now. First impressions... <laughs> They are really nice. They are nice little models. Um, firstly, we'll have to give it a slight dusting down. Because I actually take care in my models. Well, with my models, sorry. Not care in my models. Okay, so... Firstly, there's actually a lot of weight in this model. It's really heavy, but there needs to be. For a quaint locomotive and one that's not very large, there still needs to be weight in this model. Especially if you wanted to pull a vintage train of GWR clustery coaches. It needs to have the weight. And also with this model, there are traction tyres. I do believe they made some batches without the traction tyres. I am not a hundred... Oh, hang on. Yeah, there are traction tyres on the model, sorry. I do believe there were some models made, as I said earlier, that didn't have the traction tyres. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think they did. Um, what's quite curious though, there are wires on the front bogey there that connect up to these front wheels. I'm not sure why they've done that. I used to think it was something to do with electricity and pick up some current and all that. Whether that is true, I don't know, but it might be. And I'm sure that's the case. I think. You know. But anyway, let's get on to detail. So, the front bogey at the front here... It's actually quite detailed. You have axle boxes on the front there and springs. Yet yeah, you do have the big fat chunky couplings which some people don't like. Because they say it's a pain in the backside to connect to coaches that have smaller couplings. But that is a myth. Because they do still seem to connect really well. But you can take them off. As you can see by that screw there. And I shall take the front one off. I won't shut the coupling away because I'll stick it in my spares box because it could be used later in the future. You've got the locomotive's room number printed on the front buffer beam there. You also have this little stub on the buffer beam which is meant to look like a chain link coupling. I know it doesn't look like one but this is where I've got a trick up my sleeve because I am going to cut that off slightly with a pair of pliers and put on chain link couplings that you get nowadays from Hornby and Batman. These ones here are being used from the Class 37 detail pack. For some reason I couldn't add the cou coupling hooks on the 37, so I'm going to use it on this model. And what I also plan to do, I'll also stick one on the tender, and also stick a brake pipe on the locomotive as well. And the tender of course. Because it's details like that that make it just a little bit more better. The buffers, no they're not sprung, but to be honest, do we really need them? No, I don't think so. There's not much you can do with sprung buffers. I only ever touch them once in the blue moon. But I do like how they've used metal ones rather than plastic ones. Because metal is a bit more realistic and much better. Though it does look like you could replace them with sprung buffers of your own dead easily. The running board, there's not really much to say about that, I'm afraid. But then there isn't normally anyway. So it's not really much of a problem. The eagle-eyed viewer will probably notice that there are no lamp irons on this model. But then I can name some models in my collection that don't have painted lamp irons. Sorry, painted lamp irons. Ugh. Bit of dust on the front there. I mean, separately put on lamp irons. But you know, Batman did a similar thing with their pannier tanks, so I'm not going to complain here. The boiler bands and the smoke box door handles at the front are painted. Now, something that people have complained about is the smoke box door handles, or darts as they like to call them are not put on separately but they are painted which is more than what can be said for the trial models because they didn't bother painting them and it's things like that that make them stand out a little bit more which I think is really good the chimney you have a very nice chimney with some of it around it at the side there and also you have there's not much to say about the chimney but it does have a turned brass copper cap chimney which I think is really good you could fit a smoke generator in there if you wanted but I'm not going to bother the livery is beautiful. It's great western green and they've captured the livery really well. There is lining around the cab there and there is even some lining around the boiler bands there. Which I think is really nice. You've got a nice big green dome there. 
in the middle. And here you have the typical GWR safety valve, which is really nice. There's no come on focus. There's no cab vent on the top of the cab, but that's accurate to the prototype. And there are the whistles on the top. And also just like the prototype, there's no glazing in the windows. There's the running number 3064, which isn't a printed one like Batman do. It actually feels etched. You've, al you've also got some handrails down here which are painted. You do get handrails on this model but they are moulded and painted. And some people do replace them with their own separately put on handrails but I will not be doing that to this model because it's beyond my capabilities. Because in order to do that you need a scalpel and you need to repaint the whole model. No thank you. But what I do like is they actually do look like handrails and are painted. So as long as they look like handrails, I'm not really bothered. You've also got some springs here, which are put on separately here on the model. You've got painted axle boxes on the big drive wheels here, and you've even got a works plate there. There's the name, Duke of Edinburgh, with the early GWR logo there. And you've got lining on the frame there, which I think looks really nice. And you've even got a spring here as well along with some cab steps. This in reality is supposed to be brass pipe work. I know it doesn't look like it, but I do plan to paint that gold later on. You, there won't be a video of it, but I will take pictures of it though. And here's the connector for the tender, which some people don't like. But it still does the job. And it's much better than the fiddly ones we have now. But look at this. Ta-da! The cab detail is painted. Now they didn't do this with the Caledonian singles for some unknown reason. A bit of dust in there. But it's really nice that they have painted it. I've not painted this myself, it came like that. And for proof, go and have a look at some photos of the model. And you've got the gauges, the dials, the pipe work and the regulator all painted. And that's really good. And there's the screw which you take that out and the body comes off. And you have a little more detailing on here as well. So, that's the loco, there's not much else to say about it. So put the loco down, now we'll look on the tender. I mean, have a look at the tender. <laughs> Now, there are two really cool things about the tender. For starters, it has a removable coal load. Look at that. Now, I know this from the first model I had that didn't work, but I never expected a removable coal load on this model in the first place. I expected some moulded chunky coal, but no, there's a removable coal load. So you can put real stuff in there, and that is what I shall do with this model. The only thing is with the coal load, I will have to saw this bit off at the end and glue it up against here to stop the glue running all the way down here and ruining the model. But that's alright, it's not a ridiculous way of removing the coal. Take that out. Just like you get on the Q1, the Grange and the B1. No. The way they removed the coals on them, it was just really silly. So the coal load's back, but even if you don't want to replace the coal, it does look authentic. That's where the water's kept. Just brush this dust off. Another cool thing about the tender, yes I know it has plastic wheels, but you can remove them and I will show you how to do that in this video because there is a knack to doing that. And here, waiting to be used on the tender, are these. Metal wheels from my broken Batman Standard Class 4MT which cannot be used but I might as well use it for spares, and so I'm going to use these metal wheels on the tender. Uh, but you can't use pliers to cut down in the middle and remove them, and I'll show you why later. You can remove the back coupling, just like the front one, but I don't recommend it. Unsprung metal buffers on the tender, just like the front one. Another stub on the buffer beam, which will soon be replaced with the proper chain link coupling, and you've got some more detailing on the back. Basic handrails, painted, but they do still look like handrails. 
that's where the water's kept. I think I've already mentioned that, but I don't care. The face plate of the tender, it's not entirely amazing, but then, you know, I'm not bothered by that. At least there is some detail in there. In, in there, you know what I mean? That's where the tender connects to the locale. Like so. You have footsteps on the front and the back. You have axle boxes and springs on the underframe as well, and there are some rivets. And the Great Western Green is accurate along with the Great Western lettering. And the embossed on it is just really good. <laughs> Sorry about that then, a bit of polystyrene. In fact, this locomotive I've just realised is special in three ways. She's the only sort of this model I have in the collection. She's a limited edition and she's the first GWR engine I have in Great Western Green livery. All the others I have are in BR Black or BR Green. Or Brunswick Green. <laughs> so, that is... Well, it's special. <laughs> not much else I can say about that. And there is a fair bit of weight in the tender as well. There's not a massive amount, but for some weird reason, when you put the metal wheels in the tender, it adds to more weight. Mm. Don't know what that is there. But, yeah, that's the model in detail. So, let's get on to what we have next, shall we? Which is the instructions. Right, with the Larko tender moved out of shot, we'll bring the folder in and the instructions. So, first of all what you have to do is to unclip it like that. Then you need to get a hole punch and where the lines are line it up inside the hole punch because there is a, a faint arrow mark printed on the bottom there pretty much like that then punch the holes in Okay, well, for some reason, <laughs> there's something really weird going on here, because I've punched a hole in it, but only the one handle fits in. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I know what's happened. Right, there we go. It's in now. And that's basically how you do it. I know I had to slightly rip that bit there to get it in, but it can happen sometimes, but that's basically how you do it. Other times you have instructions, I mean, you can still read them, it's just it's upside down. No, don't know why. That's very silly of him to do that. But for other times for instructions, like all these, you just have to, sometimes you don't have lines in them, you just fold them in half, pretty much like that, fold it down the middle, and then place it to where the arrows are printed on the hole punch, and then hole punch it, it's simple, right. Now that that is done out of the way, Let's move on to the metal wheels, and then it's the running. Right, well I've added the one metal wheel in, as you can see, and so I'm going to show you how to add the others, but it's not an easy task, I will point you out. So what you have to do is you have to slightly push open that, like stretch it out very slightly, and the plastic wheels come out. But it's much harder to get them back in again, because see this like metal bar here in the middle? It holds the wheels in place and it's free to move about, so it's not a brilliant design, but... These will go into the spare box after anyway and will never be used again. Well actually no, I might not put them in the spare box, I might stick them on the layout somewhere because I might get a more realistic use out of them. Then you grab a metal wheel and you just clip it into place. Like 
like so. And there you go. And now we'll do the same with the other. It does hurt your fingers slightly, but... You know. Yeah, you can see the design there clearly in these wheels is not brilliant. You know, if they had to use metal wheels, why couldn't they do just try and used to do? And then here's the last metal wheel. And just clip it into place. There we are. Now they might look smaller, but you know, there's still the same height between the Loco and the Tender as this clearly proves. It might not look like it on this perspective angle, but when it's on the floor, trust me, like when it's down on the on a surface like this, it the Foot plates are both lined up, trust me. It's just in the air, it makes it look like one's higher, but it's not. Right, now we can put her on the tracks. Right, so here we are at the track, and so we're going to run the Dean single on this line. Because, well, when it comes to reviews, I really could do with Rune Locos more on this track. So I'll just lower the Dean single on. And we'll just give it a quick test. Yeah, look at that. Just look at how smooth that runs. And now we'll get the tender on. Okay, so. We'll zoom in. And now let's get her going. Well, she's running beautifully. No grinding noises or stuttering. She's coping really, really well. It's a shame they couldn't have done this with the Caledonian singles. This comes at the tunnel under the bridge. over the points. Look, she gets over them really well. No problems. Past the seaside. Past the station. Past the signal box. Over the crossing and in the tunnel. Let's get a look at these huge drive wheels moving. Look, look at that. You can see them move. It's a good job Hornby have made it so you can actually see the wheels moving, unlike what they did with the triangle wheels, because that bit was moulded so you couldn't see.
Right, well, if you're wondering what that squeaky sort of noise was earlier, that was coming from the model. I've given it a lubrication, it should work soon. Anyway, what we're going to do now is get her coupled up to a train, and we're going to couple her up to these GWR class 3 characters. I have two of them. You've seen these before, you've seen these paired up with my BR Black B12. And a few of my other GWR locomotives. But to be honest, I think these sit this locomotive much better. Just look at how nice that looks. A very vintage train there. Or, actually, no, it looks more Victorian like. <laughs> or vintage, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, let's get her rolling. Oh, yeah, she can pull them with these. I know the light might not be the brightest because we've got new bulbs and so they're not really that bright but it still gives out a bit of light. Hopefully I'll get the bulbs replaced soon with better ones. Just turn up the volume a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So that's a bit quicker. She can go quicker than that, but that's the quickest old runner. Right, so, how to sum this model up then? Yeah, that was an unrealistically fast stop. All the passengers probably spilt their drinks, but who cares? And the food, of course, but they're probably gross tasting anyway. Well, what can we say about it? Well, let me put it to you this way. If you don't like locomotives that have no sprung buffers, no separately put on smoke box door handles and all the other fancy details that you get now, then this model isn't for you. There's no point buying this model if you're going to be disappointed. But, if you like locomotives that have different running characteristics from all the other models, it looks different because, well, this is an old-fashioned model. You don't see any locomotives like this anymore. And locomotives that you also like that you can do other things to it to improve it, then... Well, these locomotives are definitely for you. You know, I would definitely give them a try, because they are better than the Caledonian singles, let's be honest. I suppose the moral of the story really is, appreciate what you've got.